Hi, my name is Jason Gillum. I'm a senior security consultant with Secure Ideas. What I want to talk about right now is a Burp plugin that I've been uh, playing around with. Um, this is uh, a Burp BS or Bean Shell. And um, where I, uh, I built this out of a need when I was working on a client engagement where um, testing a, a web application, I noticed that there was a, um, a sort of a, a checksum or Mac uh, check in place um, so that um, if I attempted to reissue the same request more than once, uh, it was able to detect this on the back end. This made uh, uh, testing within the Burp tools very difficult because uh, I'd have to um, recalculate um, that Mac each time. So um, to, to uh, get around this, I, I uh, decided to take a, an older technology, BeanShell, um, which is a, a Java-based uh, scripting language. And, uh, and basically put that inside of a, a burp extension. So that's what I'm going to show here. So to, uh, to test this out, I, I threw together an, an application that uh, to, to a certain degree mimics the type of functionality that was in my, my client's app. Um, uh, and just with respect to the, the, um, the uh, Mac generation on there. So. Um, the rest of the application is nothing like theirs. It's, um, so I created a little voting booth. Um, it's just something that seemed easy to do. Um, threw this together using Cherry Pie um, and some jQuery. And uh, basically, the way this works is uh, this particular voting booth. Um, each uh, each voter would be issued a, a voter I a link with their their unique uh, voter ID in there. You can see that in the URL bar at the top, and then they would cast their vote for uh, in this case Summer or Pedro. So we'll go ahead and vote for Pedro because you know that's what they say you should vote for Pedro. And we can see that Summer is way ahead, uh, and we want to help Pedro out a little bit more. So let's see if we can figure out a way to do that. Um, now, one of the problems, of course, is if we just uh, try to reuse the same voter ID, it won't let us back into the voting booth. It just brings us straight to the, the uh, results page. So that's not going to work. Um, we do see that if we try a different link, I have uh, a few pre-generated links here. Um, oh, that one looks like that was already used. Let me try one, another one here. Um, okay, so um, this one here hasn't been used. So we can go ahead and and uh, and cast our vote there. So now Pedro's up to four. Uh, we've run out of voter ideas, but hopefully there's there's uh, some other vulnerability in this case that we can make use of. So looking at the uh, the actual traffic here, we can see that there's uh, there's a couple of different calls. The first one is a validate call, um, and this one here passes in the voter ID. We can see that in the post parameter, and the response that comes back in this case is a is a success. Uh, in the case where we had uh, tried to reuse uh, a voter ID, uh, we get a, an error message back that tells us that that's the problem. Um, what we're probably more interested in, though, is this vote call here, uh, where we have um, our request, which is um, made up of the candidate. There's a, some kind of a timestamp on there, uh, the voter ID being passed in, and then here's our, our MAC check on there. So let's see if we can find maybe a logic flaw in there uh, or some way that we can reissue some of these same requests. Um, so first of all, um, oops, I, I just sent it to uh, Burt BS, but what I meant to do is actually send to Repeater first. Um, and inside of, of Repeater here, uh, if we just send the request, um, we can see that um, it's detecting that there's some kind of a replay. We actually get a message in this case that says, hey, there's a replay detected. You're trying to reissue the same um, map that's already been issued before. So knowing that the timestamp is part of that, maybe what we want to do is just mess with the timestamp. Um, and so if we do that, then we have a different type of error message that comes back. Now it says the Mac check failed. So that timestamp is probably part of the Mac somehow. So one way to, to uh, to take a look at this. We know that the Mac is being generated on the client side, so why don't we take a look at the page source and see what we're getting there. So um, if we, and I'll, I'll try to fast forward to where the actual vote is happening here. Here's your standard jQuery and, and JavaScript. Um, so the way this is working is that hash, uh, that's the Mac that's being sent in, is uh, a MD5 hash of the 
um, current time in milliseconds. So the server won't know what that is, so this is probably just something to make each one different. Um, and then uh, add it to the voter ID, and then, then uh, that's, that's all hashed together. So let's give that a shot. Um, we'll we'll take, a, take a look and see uh, if there's some way that we can reproduce this type of logic. Um, so to do this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to send our um, request to BERT-BS. And that's the only reason we're sending it over here is so that we have a request that we can uh, make changes to. Um, and the way this works, um, this little test thing, it doesn't actually send any requests back to the server. This is just, uh, we have uh, our starting raw request here, and then it's going to process it through that script, and then we'll see what the modified version looks like. Um, what we're trying to do in this case here is we want to get a modified version that changes the MAC and the timestamp with each request. So, um, to do this, so let's start off with, first of all, we need some way to generate something that's going to be a little bit different each time, something to mimic that timestamp. Um, so the, the easy way to do that um, is, in, inside a bean shell, of course, is to just get a, a timestamp. Um, this is the uh, current time in milliseconds. The wonderful thing about bean shell is if you're already somewhat familiar with Java, you have access to all Java functionality, and you write the script very similar to Java, although it is not strongly typed in bean shell. Um, so in this case here, this would return, uh, it would assign time to a long, um, and like I said strongly typed just now. It is actually, this, some of the, the typing is still in, strong typing is in place. It's going to assume that it's, it's a, a long until we tell it otherwise, um, but we don't have to actually tell it that this is a long in front. Um, so, um, but we do have to uh, convert it to a string here somehow. So um, that's the first part. Um, and then what we'll want to do is we want to actually set that um, post parameter, the time down here, we want to set that to this new value. So I've done that. I've just done request.set post param time. And now um, when I run the test it says that something's modified on there. And if I keep hitting test you can see that the uh, the time um, parameter on here is changing each time, and it's it's actually using the, the new uh, timestamp. The next thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to update that MD5. So to get that to get that, what we'll do is um, inside of of uh, Burp BS there is a utils uh, class, and I'll show you where the APIs are afterwards. Uh, and it has an MD5 uh, capability in there. And actually, I don't need to. Uh, Time is already a string, so I don't need to tell it again. Um, we're going to use uh, same as remember when we looked at the the uh, view source on here. Um, it was calculating the MD5 of um, the time in milliseconds plus the voter ID, um, and we're going to do basically the same thing. So we're going to do time in milliseconds. This is our timestamp plus the voter ID, which we can get from the parameter because the voter ID is already specified as a get parameter in this case here. Um, so we'll do that. And then what we'll want to do is we'll want to actually set that value on the request. So set post parameter, in this case it's Mac, that's the one we're overwriting, here it is, um, to whatever this new hash version is. So now when we test this, we hit the test, we see that both the timestamp and the Mac are changing. Now, when I click on this enable for requests, it's going to put a hook into all of the requests going through burp, and it's going to um, make those same changes. So now I can go over to repeater, and I can hit go. And we can see now instead of getting an error back, every time I hit go, we have another vote for Pedro has been registered. And if I go back to the voting booth now, and I can just go to the the root URL in this case here. Pedro, um, Pedro even though I got an error, so Pedro has uh, now has nine votes, but we're going to want more than that, right? So what we'll do is we can now take this same request and we can send it over to Intruder and um, let's um, 
we can just we can clear all of these. The the timestamp doesn't really matter. We just need we just need to send something uh, many many times and let the BERT BS plugin make those changes for us, which is going to do so um, in this case here. So let's go ahead and we'll just do um, uh, let's see here. We'll just do some numbers. Um, sequential, it can be from one to, let's just say a thousand, uh, step by one, and um, we don't want any fractional digits um, in this case here, and then I'll just hit start attack. Uh, and it's just going to go through and make all of those requests for us. Okay. Um, and now to see if it worked, um, we can go back and refresh our voting booth here. And um, Pedro now has 1,009. So it's went through and it's actually made all of those requests. And Burt BS made the change on each of those requests. So um, that's basically it. Uh, now, the to find it, um, the easiest thing to do is you just Google Burt space BS. And you should see the, uh, the Burt project come up. It is hosted on GitHub, so that's where you're going to find the binary um, jar file. It'll be in the, the uh, releases there, um, so you can download that. The, um, the instructions are, are on uh, the main page. This is a, a sort of a sub-project under BERT CO2. It's still kind of in its early stages, so I haven't integrated it at this point. I'm not sure if, if or when I will. Um, and, but there is a, a list of the supported commands. So here's that request object that we were using. If I go back to uh, BERT BS here, you can see where I use request.setparam, for example. Um, so we can say, you know, request.setPostParam. Um, um, uh, here's the get param that we used. You can also get uh, URL parameters. You can get and set cookies. You can remove cookies. Um, you can also get and set headers. So the raw request headers, if you need to make changes there, or just get values out of those. Um, and then you can also uh, get the, the method, either get or post, and you can toggle it, so you can have that happen automatically as part of your script as well. There's also utils currently supports uh, MD5, the ability to increment. Um, uh, it does uh, URL uh, decoding if you need that. Um, you can also print to error or output, which is useful for debugging. Um, there's also a storage object, which is basically just a hash map, da, da, da. And, and those actually persist between, re between requests. So there are a couple of caveats for it. First of all, the storage part is not thread safe at this point in time, so if you're running something through Intruder, which by default might go across multiple threads, um, and you're making use of storage, you probably have to turn that back to a single thread to make it work um, reliably. And uh, the other thing is there is no way to actually display those modified requests other than inside of BERT BS's test unit. Um, there, it doesn't, they don't display anywhere else. Um, and that's, um, that's just a, a quirk of, of how BERT suite is, is built. It doesn't show uh, modified requests um, or requests that have been modified um, through these means. Uh, you do get modified responses, uh, just not modified requests. So. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, if you're looking to learn a little bit more about Beanshell itself, uh, go to the beanshell.org website. Um, that will uh, go over um, bean, the Beanshell scripting language in a little bit more detail and some of the syntax that's available to you there. Uh, or you can just write pretty much straight up uh, Java and, and it'll uh, work within there. I, I do intend on adding more features to the, the API as I need them. Uh, maybe the ability to make uh, changes and, and get data from responses um, and, and probably support more different uh, uh, hashing um, algorithms and so on and so forth and utils. If you need anything in particular, um, let me know and, uh, and I'll get that, uh, get that in there if, if it's uh, possible. All right, so that's it for BERT BS, Bean Shell. Uh, if you're looking for the, the binaries and also link out to the, um, the APIs, um, find uh, BERT BS on GitHub, and you can follow links there. Um, also, if you're looking for more information on Beanshell itself and how that language works, 
uh, go to beanshell.org. It's been around for quite a long time, um, has some some interesting capabilities in there, uh, simplifies some of the, um, the frustrating um, aspects of the Java language, uh, which is nice if you're, if you're writing quick scripts. Uh, again, my name is Jason Gillum. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at jgillum. And that's uh, pretty much all I have right now. Uh, hopefully I'll be uh, adding more functionality to uh, BERT BS in the future, and uh, I'll update you when that happens.